Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. Today's topic is data augmentation, specifically image data augmentation using Keras and Python. So we will look at certain deep learning semantic segmentation algorithms and we will see the utility of data augmentation. If this is of interest to you, please continue watching and subscribe to this channel. So here is today's topic. So today's session is about data augmentation of images, specifically medical images for deep learning applications using Keras. We are in week three of build your own research internship. And this week we get to business that is research to coding. Now, the big question is, why is data augmentation even relevant for, for deep learning? Why are we even, even looking into this problem? Now, the important thing to understand is ever since the advent of convolutional neural networks, there's been a lot of research as to how much data is really needed to ensure not overfitting and to ensure good uh, generalizability in the models. Uh, some empirical results that have been very compelling have shown that in order to aid the, the requirement and the requirement here is to prevent overfitting, you need 10 times the number of sample images per model parameter. Now let's break this down. What does this mean? It means, let's say you have a very simple model, uh, which has, let's say, 10 degrees of freedom or 10 different parameters. And this could just be like a, a regression or a, you know, 10 uh, neural network parameters. In that case, the, this empirical statement says that in order to ensure you properly tune these 10 parameters, you need at least 100 images. Simple, right? Now let's look at a sample neural network. So this is the sample AlexNet network, which is a combination of, of convolutions, then there is max pool, and of course there is this uh, linear fully connected layers after that, followed by softmax, and then there's a classification. So this is uh, the, the original network that was released on the ImageNet dataset. It, now, the important thing to understand is here, what are the parameters? The parameters are whenever you have a kernel, each and every weight of that kernel that needs to be fine-tuned, so the weights and biases, they, they combined, uh, they are called the parameters. So in, in just a simple AlexNet network, the important thing to understand is there are 62 million parameters. And the, the source of this, I will be linking this, uh, it, this is an extremely good data science uh, blog, which actually breaks it down how it comes to 62 million parameters. But the important thing to notice is these parameters are counted from the convolutional layer, the fully connected layers, of course, and the classifier layer, but any max pool layer or stride layers don't really uh, give you any, any additional parameters. However, just doing convolutions for a few layers can result up to 62 million parameters, which means 620 million samples or annotated images are required to ensure there is no overfitting. Now, do you think that that many number of images would be possible for a medical image classification or segmentation uh, application? I believe not. That's why it's extremely important to augment the data so that you can make the maximum use out of the data that you have at hand. With me so far? What is image data augmentation actually? So let's say that we have the cellular data from the ISBI challenge, and I will be showing, uh, explaining what this actually is in, in a little bit. But let's say for now that this is my image X, and this is the annotations corresponding to it for Y. Now I want to reuse this image, but in a different way. So what would I do? Image data augmentation, what it would do is, let's say it, I can flip or I can cut off a, a portion of it and then resize this image along with its label. So I'm only concentrating on the top half of the image or I could be concentrating on the left half of the image and append the remaining areas with, uh, you know, some neighborhood pixel values or I could be, con uh, you know, looking at the bottom parts. Now, of course, these are exaggerated uh, definitions uh, because ideally, if the convolution neural network always requires same size input. So if you just cut off an image like this, the, the size becomes different. So in that case, you'll probably have to append it or you'll just have to resize, in which case this image will look very stretched and not very realistic. So you have to ensure the stretching or the appending that you do is as realistic as possible. Otherwise, you will actually be doing more harm to your model learning than helping.
So in this example, like I showed, the same image, now I can have actually three versions of it. So I, I get four copies. So if I had, you know, 10 such images, now I can get four times of that or 40 such images for training. Now you saw how easily using the same image and the same uh, labels that you've generated once, data augmentation can actually help us generate a larger data set very fast. So far, so good. So oh, we are now into the heart of coding using the Keras environment. Now, this is the page that I wanted to review before we actually get into the, the, the code for, for this exercise. So the, the Keras data pre-processing, and I will be sharing this, this link in the description box, let's look at the arguments that it carries. So you will see that the main arguments that you can modify or play with are rotation range, and this will, will take the image and rotate it uh, by a certain amount of degrees. Then there's a width range, then there's a height range, and then there's brightness, shear, and, and zoom. So typically, most of, of the data augmentation or the rotations or, or modifications to the same image can actually be achieved by just using you know, this range of, of particular uh, parameters. Now, let's start looking at the at the code base directly. So this is the is the code base that we are initially uh, we're going to be looking at. And this corresponds to the ISBI challenge. Let's look at and understand the data set first. So this data set corresponds to cellular images. And this says if a particular region of interest in an in image is a membrane or not. So it's a binary classification. If, if the pixel at that particular uh, point in the image, if it is black, the value means the pixel value will be zero. And if it is white, then the pixel value is one. So ideally, you want to segment the white regions away from the black regions. And this is just explaining the labels. Now, one uh, downside of this image is, again, like I had mentioned uh, for, for medical images, is the, is the number of images is extremely small. So there are only 30 images. And for this particular data set, what we can do, and this is just an example of, of showing the importance of data augmentation. So we are actually learning from all the 30 images. So we are training on them and we are testing on all the 30 as well, because there's just such a dearth of, of, of images. However, Whenever we do actual machine learning, we should never do that. We should always do an 80-20 split or a 70-30 split. I will explain what that is in, in the weeks to come. But ideally, what you want to do is make sure an image, if you're training on it, you should never test on it. So you can use that uh, you know, for, for, for validation if you're doing folding. However, an image that you train on should never be the one to test on. So that should be a, a, a rule of thumb for the, the baseline exercise that we are doing. Now, you have this particular data set, and let's say that you have already cloned it. So I have cloned and, and, and downloaded it. So let me go to, so this is the, the folder that I have ready to demonstrate to you. So first step, after you have downloaded and, and prepared the, the particular you know, code and, and folder, you need to do is you need to check for the dependencies. Any code base will, it's generally supposed to give you what are the dependencies on what version of Python and if had any um, other libraries that it has dependencies on. So let's first check if these dependencies are met or not. So we will open a terminal and there, let's say we type in Python. So we have Python version 3.5.5. Let's see what version this is compatible with. Yes, it is compatible with 2.7 to 3.5. So we're good with that. And also we need Keras, which is greater than 1.0. So let's see if we have that or not. So here I will just say, no, first I will have to import Keras. And you see that it is using TensorFlow Blackend. And now I will do say it's 2.2.4. So it is created 1.0. So this is completely compatible. So I have checked for my dependencies. Interesting, right? Now, the only thing left for us to do is actually look at the code. So if you look at the code, there are three major files. So there's this main.py, there's the model.py, and then there's the data.py. 
And uh, the, the preparation of everything is in an IPython notebook. So depending on what you want to use, you can actually uh, you know, look at that particular uh, file. I have been running this on a spider environment, and uh, that's what I wanted to share with you. So let's look at first the data augmentation part, and that is this part of the code in, in the top. So you see the rotation range. I have you know changed it to you know something 0.2, and then there's a width shift, and then there's a height shift, and then there's some amount of shear, zoom, and horizontal flip, and of course the the fill mode. Some of the changes that I've already made here is again I am saving all the augmented data. To a particular folder so i can actually demonstrate to you what augmentation it really means and what is this code right here actually doing um at, at that point then we are just fitting the model and we are doing it for you know the, there are 10 steps per epoch and i'm running it for three epochs i will show you what that means and finally i'm, I'm testing it on the on all the 30 uh, images uh, so i think we've be finished doing it, it here so let me just go over the 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 code ones in order to explain it, what it's, it's really doing. So of course, there is some uh, initializations here, but the main augmenter part is actually being taken care of by this train generator function. And what you pass to this train generator function is you pass the batch size. So you see that if I go back to my main function, in this case, I'm using a batch size of two. So I will be taking two images to generate, uh, you know, the, the these augmented versions of them. And again, in this case, uh, the cellular images, uh, they are they are grayscale, so they, they don't have any color. So let's see what these uh, data augmented results actually become. So if you go into the membrane and if you go into train and aug, aug this is the, the folder that I've actually uh, saved everything. So you see that we have three augmented versions of the same image. Now, if we just look at them side by side, you will see. So here you see there's some amount of appending that has happened at, at the corner. Again, some amount of appending that has happened in the bottom and in the, in the, in the, in the side. And again, on, on the right hand side. So you will see that it's the same image, but it's as if you have moved it around. And what this augmenter is doing is, is it's generating these moved around structures, but not just the augmented image, but it is also generating the equivalent, uh, the labels for them. So it is not just augmenting the image, it is augmenting the labels as well. So now, essentially, you had 30 images to train for, but now you have augmented 30 times three, so you have 90 images. So every image has uh, three copies of them, and now you are able to actually replicate or, or reuse the same image for for uh, you know multiple uh, multiple zoomed in regions of interest. So uh, again, if we look to look at some more images, things will become a little more clear. So you see, this is for the same image number one. You see, it's the same image which has been rotated and and zoomed in, and uh, you will see a certain amount of shear. So this is image number two. Here you will see that, of course. Uh, so let's look at image number two once, once more. So this is image number two. You see there is this sheath sort of nature here, but in the in the next setup, the, the image has actually been flipped and there is flipped along with uh, some sort, sort of stretchiness that is happening. So this is what uh, the image augmentation does. It gives you that stretchiness look. Now, next, let's look at uh, what the, the epochs are, are doing to us. And uh, I will be explaining the, these, these parameters and metrics on, on our uh, Thursday uh, session. But today, you will see as my epochs are progressing, the loss function is going on decreasing. And this is what the intention is. So we need the loss to be decreasing and we want the accuracy to be increasing, which is happening in this particular case. So then the only last thing for us to, to do is to see what is the final prediction. So if this was my uh, original test image, then this becomes the, the predicted version. And of course, if you increase the number of training epochs, you will see that this becomes more and more clearer. So you will get a much more uh, black and white image rather than just a grayscale image. But this shows that your uh, composition or your algorithm is actually working. So that's that for today. We have looked into this data augmentation pipeline. We've looked at the, the, at, at the code base some amount, and we've sort of seen using images what it's actually doing. So on our Thursday session, we will be looking into it in much more detail as to what these parameters mean and what each and every output metric is suggesting to us. Thank you. See you next time.